Hi guys, it's Chris at Cork and Crown. I'm back at my cider desk with some more cider to try. It's a special one. It's the sixth of my Smith Hain box that I received. I've been saving it to last because it's kind of uh, the most celebratory, special one if you like. It's a traditional method, so champagne method if you like. Um, there is the bottle, there is the cork. 2021 the vintage. Um, Apples are Harry Masters Jersey 27%, Dabon at 16%, Michelin 15%, Falstaff 40%, Browns 12%, Chemnitz Bitter 5%, Porter's Perfection 5%, Brown Snout, Phil Barrel, Stembridge Cluster 6%. Very similar blend of um, cider apples in all of theirs, but in different proportions. But I assume that's to, to, to do with seasonality and so forth. Uh, and also what sort of cider you're making. They might have gone for a slightly more acid uh, cider for um, sparkling, a lot of people use like culinary dessert apples for champagne method cider, traditional method cider, because it's got more acidity. And actually, champagnes and uh, Clemons, etc., are actually quite acid. If you try them in the flat, they've got quite high acidity. People tend to go for that. This is actually primarily, uh, but, 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 yeah, uh, bitter sweets, but there are some some browns in there, uh, some others which I can't remember. Stembridge Cluster, Phil Barrel, can't remember if they're. Oh, bittersweet, so bittersharp to it. I'll have a look. I'll put it on the screen. Anyway, I was going to have this tomorrow night. So today is Saturday the 13th of July, which might be something. So um, that means uh, what? Cut that bit out. I was, I'll, I'll have to wait a year, then I'll tell you what I was going to say. Anyway, anyway. Let's open this up. I've got a massive glass because I don't know how fizzy this is going to be. Um, so traditional method. So basically you make a dry cider, then you dose it. Is that the dosage? There's dosage and tirage, and I can't remember which is which. I think that's the dosage. I probably got it wrong. Um, then you dose it with something sugar. So you'll have like uh, either apple juice or sugar, whatever. You know, you'll dose it with something with sugars in it, which are fermentable. Then you put a crown cap on it, not a cork. Cork and crown, crown cap, cork, yeah. Um, and you'll let it re-ferment in bottle to get fizzy and then you'll riddle it so you'll, make, you'll gradually turn it on these airframes you'll turn them turn them until they go upright like this up so the neck is at the bottom and all the, the leaves and the, and the yeast will sink into the neck and then what you typically do is freeze the neck so it becomes a solid lump like a cork of like the the, the leaves and so forth then you take off the crown cap and the pressure of the uh, the fizz forces that that plug out then you top it up again with a little bit of stuff put another cork in it like this and then you have your traditional method it takes quite a long time so look at about an 18 month process this is 2021 this is on their website as is the sorry, as is their 2022 so they're probably looking at maybe two years about 18 months i think it's probably about the minimum you usually see for a champagne um Anyway, uh, seven point five percent. It's just off dry. TA three point nine grams per liter. TA titratable acidity. So three point nine. That's not too acid actually. That's about that's about what you get in an, an average red wine, I think. So a bit of acidity, not lords. Um, yeah, let's try it. Boom. So please don't make a mess. Please don't make a mess. It's nice and cold, so hopefully it won't make a mess. I haven't got a towel in case it does. You know what? I haven't got a towel. I don't like using this towel. Uh, after laundry. It's my uh it's my tea side, it's my transporter bridge towel. Transporter bridge. Which you could see from everywhere in Teesside where I grew up. That's the main sort of thing on the horizon everywhere you are is a transporter bridge. It's a very glamorous place I grew up. Lots of chemical works. At least the were. they've all closed down now. On a good day, good day, if the wind was in the direction, you could really smell them <laughs> wherever you happen to be. So let's hope this doesn't blow. I assume it won't because the door set exactly right. I don't know exactly how much sugar they put in because it goes to dry. So then we'll know basically how fit it's going to be. Let's see. Oh, it's not going to be too... Oh, yeah, this isn't going too, too crazy. What? Pop. Oh, just a little pop, actually. But there's the smoking gun. Let's pour it out. Oh yeah, but look at the bubbles. Certainly got some, look at the mousse on that. It's got some bubbles going on. The shizzle. Uh, let's grab a piece of paper. Come here, piece of paper. 
There it is. Beautiful there. Beautiful. Deep gold going into amber, that is. Fine bubbles coming up. Not super fizzy. Well, that's fine. I prefer less fizz than more fizz because the fizz will mask flavour. And I expect this to be delicious. Um, the last one we had was the uh, Method Ancestral. Had a similar blend of apples in there. Actually, this has got fewer. I can see it's, 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 it doesn't have the yarn to mill. Uh, doesn't have the, oh, it doesn't have the trim that's bitter. I think it just doesn't have the uh, yarn to mill, which we had in the uh, Method Ancestral. So I still, I still expect this to have some tannin, but I wonder if it's got a bit more acidity. Let's have a smell. Oh, the bubbles are right in my nose. That's probably with a big glass like this. Big hit of um, CO2. It smells lovely. It smells like a, it smells like a lovely, rich, traditional cider is what it smells like. I mean, I can't say any more than that. It's reminding me a little bit of the Method and Sestral, so I feel like it's going to have some tannin. It does have that structure, but I feel like there's a slightly fresher note to it. A little bit more of a dessert apple character. It does have that traditional apple thing going on. Um, that sort of, um, you know, stored apple aroma. But I feel like it's some fresh eating apple uh, characteristic going on. If you cut into like an eating apple, like I don't know, a jazz or something like that. You know, you'd have some of that sort of, it, you can't smell sweet, but it makes you, it would make you think more of those sort of fresher eating apples. Um, It's nice. I think it's smokiness. It smells really good. It smells really good. My mouth's watering. That's always a good sign. Let's try it. Yeah, bubbles are great. Bubbles are great. Solid tannin again. A little bit less of the hard tanning, a bit less bitterness on the back. Still got these just like full on astringency on the palate though. Um, because of that less bitter character, I feel like I'm perceiving it as being sweeter than the method, method ancestral because it doesn't have the bitterness. Uh, I think the bitterness was offsetting the sugar more than it is in this. So it does taste like it's off dry, more than like it's an off dry cider for sure. Still not sweet by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, it's easier to drink, but it's not quite as tannin, tannic. Again, it would be good with food though. Some fats to offset those tannins would be great. Um, but this is something you could drink more likely by itself. <laughs> the tannins in this feel uh, almost like the tannins you get in like a, a, a light to medium body red. That's what I would say. So it has tannin, but it's not brutally tannic. It has acidity though. It does have acidity. It's not mouth puckering. Just about, again, it's like what you get in a red wine, you know, like a nice acidity, cleanses your palate, um, offsets the sweetness a little bit, the sweetness, I mean, what sweetness there is. Um, but yeah, it's really good. Mm. I've just got like an orchard element as I'm drinking it. It made me think of orchards as I'm drinking it. As, my nose, as I'm drinking it, but my nose is in the glass, that aromatic. Orchards. Yeah, I don't, I've been in lots of orchards. I don't know if I can tell you what they smell like. Um, there's also a hint of funkiness about it. There's a hint of farm, farmyard funk. But I like that as well. I don't mind that. I like it. It's a good cider. It's a good cider. It's nice. It's balanced. It's got a bit of sweetness. It's got the tannin. It's got fruit. It's got great fine bubbles. Lovely mousse. We like. We like. And we've enjoyed trying all six. Of these balls from Smith End. Very much indeed. Thank you, Winner. Uh, well, thank you, Anna, for sending these to me. Um, I enjoyed it very much. I enjoyed it very much and hope to have some more very, very soon. So I was going to save this till tomorrow because um, tomorrow is the final of the Euros and England are playing Spain. I thought I'll save it for that because it's celebratory. And then I thought, England are playing Spain. Will I have a lot to celebrate? I don't think so. I don't think so. Unfortunately for me, I support England, who haven't won a trophy in my lifetime. I'm sure there's lots of people who can say that. I was born in 1970, so when I was born, they were world champions. But I didn't see them win it, and they haven't won anything since. And also, I support Middlesbrough. And Middlesbrough never really win anything ever. So I'm damned 
I don't know why I watch football. It just stresses me out because he's very little playing in it. But anyway, I hope I'm with England tomorrow. And I hope I could have opened this tomorrow and celebrated. But I'm having it tonight instead. Because I want to have it in a positive mood rather than feeling depressed. Because once again, I watched England lose. Anyway, we've got to a final. Well done, everybody. Yes. Much more of that, please. Anyway, thank you for joining me at my cider desk with a delicious cider. I hope you join me again. But until that time, cheers.